Hi, and welcome back to Class Boxed, writing automated R spec tests. Today we're going to have a look at XPath. We're going to briefly discuss what XPath is, uh, why you would want to use and potentially not want to use XPath, and how to use XPath when writing R spec tests using Selenium WebDriver. So, what is XPath? XPath is effectively used to help identify or rather locate elements on a web page. So for instance, you can use XPath to find uh, links, to find text, to find um, sections, anything that allows you to find something on a web page. Now we briefly talked about XPath in my RSpec locator video where we quickly just tried to select something using an XPath locator. So this video is effectively an extension to that because XPath actually has a lot more to offer than to just select something by using some kind of wildcard and then an attribute. So we'll actually look at XPath in a little bit more detail and how it can be used to further select some of this stuff. So I've written a really basic test. Again, doesn't do anything too exciting. It just opens up an empty Firefox browser, navigates to the zoo site uh, and then closes it. So we'll do our XPath magic inside our it test. So the first test I'd like to do, or the first thing I'd like to do with XPath is effectively just print out this line of text here. So to do that, I need to look at the underlining code for this. So I can see it's a, a heading one type tag. I can see it's inside a, a TD tag, which is inside an R tag. Uh, which is inside the t-body and so on. We can see this hierarchy manifesting in order to get to this h1 tag. This is a really important note, this concept of a hierarchy or if you like this this HTML being the higher level tag followed by uh, head tags, uh, body tags which are effectively the child tags of this HTML tag. So this concept of having a, a head tag and then a tag inside it and then a head tag inside it and so on. This this concept of a parent-child relationship between tags is important to understand when it comes to writing XPath expressions because it is this concept you use to identify something on a page. So let's just say we wanted to identify this text here. We know it's inside here. If your starting point was here, how do you navigate to this H1 tag? Well, the first thing you'd do is you'd get the HTML tag. You would then look at head. Since it's not inside head, you skip that. You'd go to body. Is it inside body? Uh, well, yes. Ultimately, your H1 tag is under the body tag. So you'd look at body. Uh, and then you'd look at the next tags available. So in this case, the body only has one tag called a table tag. So you'd look into that. And you'd follow this pattern through until you get to this H1 tag. If we took this concept, how can we translate that into an XPath expressor? Well, the first thing we'll do is we'll just say puts because what we're trying to do is uh, print out the text like, is, like we said you would. And I'm using XPath and I know there's got to be a, some kind of expression here. And I want to do is I want to print out the text. We know that this particular welcome to the zero adoption center this string of characters is effectively inside this h1 tag and we know the route to get to it we first gotta hit the html then body then table then t body then the second tr then the second td and then the h1 so if we follow that to start off an expression if we start off with a forward slash this single forward slash is the same as saying start by looking at the root of the HTML source which is effectively here. So the first tag we need to look at is the HTML tag then it was the body then it was the table so it was the head body table and then it's the T body and then the second TR second TD and H1 so it's the T body it's the second TR into the second TD and then it's the H1. Now when you have tags which are what when they exist on a level on a hierarchy level so let's just say 
if we did this for so just so it's a little bit more easier to see on the highest level we've only got one HTML uh, under HTML we only have two tags we've got a head and a body inside body we've got a table and so on but see these tags this HTML this body this table they're unique on their level but when you come inside this T body tag we've actually got three TR tags so that means we can't just say get me a TR tag especially if you want to identify a specific TR tag in this case we want the second one because our H1 is inside this so in XPath how do we say I want a specific tag when there are more than one well what do you do you use uh, the box braces and inside that you define which one you want so in this case we want the second one and we know we've got multiple TR tags as well sorry we've got multiple TD tags so we do the same thing we say TD2 so now if I run this this should when it runs this XPath locator and it tries to find the text for something it's gonna go to the HTML then it's gonna look at the body then table then T body then the second TR second TD and then the H1 so let's run this and see what happens and it's printed out exactly what we were expecting now for those wondering how do you just run the test without right clicking and then going to run well I just used the shortcut Control shift F10 to run my test for me I'd actually advise you to use shortcuts where possible it just makes life a little bit more uh, quicker uh, when programming uh, but it comes down to preference I personally like using shortcuts when I can anyway back to the point so we know this uh, XPath expression got us the line of text we wanted so this is an example of a path a full absolute path to something using XPath now before going in forward there is a big big flaw in doing it this way uh, 10 points to anyone who can guess what the flaw is uh, well the flaw is this let's just say this TR tag that we're looking at this second one so it's in essence in here let's just say uh, someone comes in sorry this is the one we're looking at so let's just say someone comes in and for whatever reason they add in another TR tag here so they add in one immediately below the first one that means all of our contents which were in the second one would now belong to the third one this means that our X path path here will actually break because this wouldn't be true to what we were looking for in the first place so providing a full path isn't necessarily the best idea because it's more susceptible to break in uh, because let's face it as you're building a web page it's really likely you'll add in components, you'll move things around so what you'd like to do is actually uh, build in a little bit more wriggle room when you're providing paths and again XPath kind of offers that to you so this was an example of a full path well a full absolute path if you like what we can do is we can slightly change this and we can use what's called if I just remove this for a second we can use what's called uh, the double forward slash which basically doesn't have a defined starting point when we look at our source when you use a single forward slash that means look at the root i.e. look here here if you like but when we say double forward slash what we're basically saying is we want access to every single tag at the same time so it gives us the ability to almost jump in anywhere into our code without having to start from the very beginning so this does offer us some advantages uh, for instance instead of going to HTML then body then table we know there's only one table we can directly say table for instance inside the table we have a T body but again we know there's only one T body we don't need to define it so we can just quite simply say uh, search for everything under T table because we know there's only one T body and then we can effectively just apply this to finish it off now both of these expressions are looking at exactly the same thing but this is much more less error prone to breaking 
if someone adds in various other things uh, this will be a little bit more flexible in trying to cater for any changes so again let's just run this really quickly and see what happens and there you go again it's printed at the same line uh, so this was an example of using descendants uh, concept so when we say double forward slash if you like the technical term for this especially when you use it inside an expression is the concept of looking at the descendants of a tag so when we said table at the forward slash two times we're looking at every single child tag this table has so remember that concept we talked about where we said um, where we talked about or discussed this parent child relationship well the descendants of the table tag happen to be everything we're looking for here we can also go a little bit further as well we can use what's called a wildcard so instead of say defining a t-body here we could have just said a wildcard which means if someone somehow manages to add in multiple t-bodies uh, just look at every single one of them in fact we can go a little bit more further we can actually let's just say remove the table as well so let's just say we know that this h1 tag will always be in the second td uh, in the second tr and the rest doesn't really matter to us we can kind of take this approach so again let's run this and see what happens and it's printed out exactly what we were expecting so this is an example of of using a wildcard uh, XPuff provides other means as well for instance we can use what's called finding something by an attribute so let me explain what an attribute is so see here you have this body tag uh, it's just a body tag there's nothing else in this tag it, it, you've got a, a less than arrow symbol and then you've got the word body and then a greater than arrow symbol uh, in here for instance this t-body also has nothing else other than t-body but if you look at table for instance this table has a table tag in addition to various other information so we've got a style attribute which has a value we have an ID attribute which also has a value if you looked at these three TR tags two of the TR tags have classes with different values for their classes uh, the one in the middle has no additional information other than just TR so we can actually use this additional information in the form of XPath attributes to grab information so how do we define this well let's just take this as an example for instance paste it in here and let's just say that we had a table here and let's just say someone else added in more tables or more importantly let's just say right under the body tag someone added in a table our XPuff could actually end up looking at that table but if we assuming that IDs are unique provided this ID attribute with that value then this XPuff would always look at the correct table so to provide an attribute value what you do is very similar to this concept of square braces with the number inside we provide a square braces for the table and then we give it an attribute so in XPuff when you want to identify something as an attribute use the at symbol followed by the name of the attribute not the value the name of the attribute so in this case the name of the attribute is ID and then you say equal to whatever value you want and the value needs to be inside a set of quotes so in this case the value is table 1 so if you run this we should get a fourth line of this same information printed again and there you go so this was using attributes so far we've learnt how to find something by an absolute path although I've recommended we don't do that because of how brittle this approach can be we've looked at the concept of using descendants uh, this is still a little brittle but it's better than providing a full flush which is much more prone to break in we've looked at using wildcards which again provide even more flexibility but again can break for instance if this could change this could change and so on 
we then started looking at this concept of using attributes which is probably a better approach for instance if because we used an attribute here we will definitely at least well at the very least look at the right table although this can also still break so by all means this is not the full functionality or mechanics that XPath provides this is by no means an exhaustive list this is just an introduction to of using the most commonly used mechanisms that XPath provides us with I personally would refrain from using XPath where possible simply because of its brittleness uh, if it breaks it means you have to go and change things in a lot of places potentially adding in a really large overhead to changing uh, things in a test or things in some properties file for instance like I said if someone breaks this page in the concept of your XPath strings then things on your test will break as well try your best to use locators for class locators for ID as opposed to XPath only try and use XPath where you don't have access to certain locators which are provided by Selenium WebDriver for RSpec. Uh, for instance, if you come across a page where the page is written using a, a, well many many diffs and no easy to use attributes or even the page is written uh, with other applications in mind where not a lot of thought is given to attributes such as ID and class because there's no need to. Maybe you can use XPath in those circumstances but otherwise try not to use XPath. Uh, XPath is really powerful and it's really flexible uh, but at the same time it's very brittle as well it can prove to be problematic uh, if you don't really look into XPath properly and really look into how to write some really flexible XPath expressions and that's it for this video folks if you enjoy my video and find they bring you some new knowledge or insight into writing web driver aspect tests then please subscribe and rate if you have any questions or video suggestions and please leave a comment below. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.